In this session we're going to talk about market supply and look at some of the factors that uh, lead to changes in the market supply, some of the determinants of supply in effect. So to get started um, we realize that the, the total market supply of a good is the amount that firms in the industry will supply to the market at various prices. That could act as a, as a working definition of supply. It's the horizontal summation of the individual firm's supply curves. That may sound a bit complex, but really all it's saying is that the, the total supplied on the market must equal the amount supplied by each of the firms in that particular industry. So if each firm makes a contribution, the total must be the summation of those contributions. We'll have a look at a diagram to illustrate that in a second, but I've got one more point to make before we move on, and that is, uh, like demand, supply is also um, a flow concept. That means it's related to time. There are two types of concepts. There are flows and stocks. Stock is not related to time. A flow is related to time. And supply, like demand, is related to time. It's very important to realize this. If I said to you that the output of the car industry was 100,000 cars, it's meaningless. Is it 100,000 cars a day or 100,000 cars a year? It's a big difference. So we must specify a time period. So it's a flow concept. Let's get back to um, the total market output. This is what I was saying earlier. If we um, imagine our industry here just to have two firms A and B then at the going price let's say of P1 the output of firm A will be QA and the output of firm B will be QB so that the, the total output on the market will be A plus B. So I think that's relatively straightforward I don't think there is a there is an issue there. Um, the supply curve has a positive relationship with price. Um, I think we have to realize here that companies come into existence because the owners want to make a profit, generally speaking. I know there are firms that come into existence for more philanthropic reasons, for, to, to help humanity and to, to <clears throat> perhaps act as charities and so on. But commercial firms, the majority, are in business to make a profit. And it's certainly the case that they must cover their costs. If they don't cover their costs, they're not going to exist. So in a sense, all firms have to make a profit, have to make a surplus or a profit. Higher market prices are a powerful incentive to increase production. Um, producers like to see prices in the market rising. If, if the price is rising, there is an incentive to step up production. And that really is one of the powerful indicators that the supply curve is upward sloping. As the price rises, there is a bigger incentive to increase production. Price rises, output increases. It could also be the case, of course, that more marginal firms, perhaps companies in the past who were put off from entering the market because maybe the price wasn't right or whatever, these companies now see the price rising for this particular product and they have an incentive to join the market. So more marginal firms join in and add their output to the market as well. So as the price rises, output expands. So we have an upward sloping supply curve. As price rises, more is uh, supplied. Price rises, more supplied. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll be emphasizing this throughout. So for the moment we need to identify what makes a movement along the supply curve as opposed to a shift of the curve. Well a change in price of the product will cause a movement along the curve. Now this is very important. A change in price will cause a movement along the curve. Um, here's the supply curve and here's the price of P1 and the quantity of Q1. Now if we change the price to P2, P3 or whatever, then 
we would simply read off the associated outputs for each price. We would take the line across to the supply curve and take it down to the quantity axis and read off. It's just like reading a graph when you're at school. So changing the price is moving along the curve. We simply shift or slide along the, the um, supply curve to read out the associated quantities. A change in one of the determinants of supply other than price, however, will cause a shift of the supply curve. Now we need to be clear about this. A change in the price will cause a movement along the supply curve. A change in one of the other factors, one of the other determinants of supply, will cause a shift of the supply curve. So here I've drawn S1, S1 to indicate a rightward shift of the supply curve. I will focus in on rightward shifts, but if you reverse everything I'm saying, you will get a leftward shift. The supply curve could shift to the right or to the left. It doesn't have to be one way. Now, a shift of the supply curve can be caused by any of these. In fact, if you looked in the books, you'll find uh, perhaps a, a more comprehensive list. Uh, this is enough for us, however, to get us started here. Um, I think it's reasonable to go with this list and if you want a more sophisticated treatment go to one of the, the textbooks. Let's look at each one of these in turn. Just very briefly skip over it in turn just to, to show how it works. Um, let's start with the price of related products. Now the point here is that the supply curve will shift to the right if the price of related products increases. For example, uh, the production of bicycles, if the production of bicycles, uh, that will increase, I should say, as the price of petrol increases. As the price of petrol increases, we want to substitute. We want to have an alternative means of transport. So people may buy bicycles. Price of petrol rises, the, the price, sorry, the quantity of bicycles demanded or needed to on, on the market will increase and the supply will, will jump over. So as the price of something changes um, the, the quantity of the other thing will vary on the market. Could be income. Supply curve shifts to the right because incomes increase. Um, as incomes increase more can be sold at the going price. Um, quite straightforward. Technology within the, the firm. Um, supply curve will shift to the right as technology improves. Costs will fall for a start and more may be produced. The effects of improving technology is to reduce costs. Therefore at a given price more may be produced at that price. So the supply curve would shift to the right. The goals of the firm. Let's pause here for a second. Goals of the firm, sometimes known as the objectives of the firm. This is a big literature in, in economics. It's got its own area. It's called the theory of the firm. And <coughs> there are many, many, many theories of the firm um, with increasing complexity and sophistication. You could, for example, you could say that the objectives of firms are to maximize profits. Or someone else could say, well, the objectives of firms are to maximize sales. In some circumstances that may be the same as maximizing profits, but but it may be that the the core objective is to maximize sales. Or it could be to maximize the growth of sales or the growth of the firm by investing more. Or it could be that the firm just simply wants to survive. Uh, the owners want to be happy and relaxed and unstressed and make some profit and they're not maximizing anything, they're just living. So when we talk about the goals or the objectives of the firm, it's a complicated area and there's a big literature on it. However, for our purposes here, you could say that the 
the supply curve could shift to the left if uh, the company wishes to supply more. That's nice and vague. Um, you could say the company the companies may have discretion to step up production or reduce production, but discretion really depends on, critically depends on, I suppose, um, competition. Uh, what other producers are doing will determine what the, the firm does. So they may have discretion, they may not. Depends on the type of competitive situation they're working under. Next one could be taxation. Um, the supply, the supply curve could shift to the right uh, if the government reduces taxes. Uh, here I'm looking at things like corporation tax. If the government reduces corporation tax, clearly the firm have more resources and could step up production at the going price. Or the company may reduce VAT or the administration charges within the company that has to deal with VAT or deal with um, bookkeeping and accountancy or whatever. It, if, the comp if the government reduces costs, the supply curve will shift to the right, to S1. It could reduce, for example, employee tax. Um, that could be national insurance contributions. So the employer has to pay less for each employee. If it has to pay less for each employee, it may take on more workers. If it takes on more workers, supply could increase to S1. So changes in taxes can influence the position of the supply curve. And there are other areas of production and output. Nice and vague term. Nice, really vague term. Um, I suppose what I mean by that is there might be some products which are very peculiar, very idiosyncratic, very one-offish. And um, it's maybe the influences for those are different to others and to such an extent that they, they warrant specialist consideration. Um, difficult sometimes to dream up examples here but maybe it's the case that farmers for example who this year experience a price of P1 for their produce and this year supplying Q1 next year they think well they'll go with the same, they'll plant the same crop and try to get P1 and produce Q1. However, at the end of the season, the growing season, they find they've got Q2 because the weather was really nice to them. It wasn't really planned by them, it's just a bit of serendipity. But the supply curve had shifted. That's the point. Okay, so in this class what we've done is we've looked at the idea of the supply curve, we've talked about being a, a flow concept, we've talked about movements along the supply curve and shifts of the supply curve and some of the factors that may cause the supply curve to shift. In the case of the diagrams that I've used, I've moved the, the supply curve to the right um, consistently. If you reverse what I'm saying, if you, if you think about it and uh, read up in the texts, you'll find that many of the points I've made, you just simply reverse it and the supply curve will move to the left. Okay, that concludes this session, so thank you for watching.